Well, welcome to Graceful Aging. We have the sleep specialist today and Dr. Barbara Fisher. You've helped thousands of individuals get a good night's sleep, haven't you? Well, sleep is really important and I've really enjoyed working in the field of sleep. We're learning about how much sleep affects our life on a daily basis. It's amazing. Why is sleep essential as far as our body and our brain? I don't think work? we've recognized how important sleep is until recently. There's research studies that are coming out that are showing Showing if you don't get good sleep or if you have insomnia, it puts you at risk for Alzheimer's disease. You can be at risk for insulin resistance syndrome, late onset diabetes. All these physical disorders involving the body and the mind can happen because of sleep. Sleep apnea is emerging as a major, major issue. And I don't think we've understood that. And the world of sleep is just exploding where there's so much research being done to show us that sleep equals wake. And that what we do during the day is dependent upon what we do at night. What, what is insomnia? Well, basically, if it takes you longer than 20 minutes to fall asleep, you meet the criteria for insomnia. Most of the time when people will talk about insomnia is when it takes them about 30 minutes to fall asleep, or they're lying in bed for an hour and a half trying to count sheep, which really doesn't work very well. And as a result, they don't get very good sleep, and then they wake up and they're tired and they're cranky, and it affects their day. It also affects their thinking. And we've shown on testing that it affects their attention as well as short-term memory. Is insomnia caused by medical reasons or psychological reasons or both? It can be both and, and, and basically what also happens with insomnia that I didn't mention is you tend to stay in a lighter stage of sleep. You know, you have four stages of sleep and so you tend to stay in a lighter stage of sleep so you wake up in the morning and you feel like you have not slept at all. So if someone says to you, you know, I go to sleep but honestly I do not think I slept, then they could be at risk for a lighter stage of sleep or again some sort of insomnia. Insomnia. Well, but it's basically waking up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. or again sleep onset that's there. So let's break that up. You, you mentioned there's four stages of sleep but what's the first stage, stage one? Well that's the lightest stage of sleep and, and that's very close to wake. Then stage two is a little bit deeper. Stage three and four that are now together as two stages, actually called stage three, is your deep sleep. And so if someone tries to wake you from your deep sleep it's really hard for them to wake you up, especially if it's like a really deep sleep that was the old stage four. Mm -hmm. But if they wake you up on one and two, you're like ready to go, you know. So that's why you don't feel like you've gotten good sleep. And that's the issue about insomnia, that it, it, there's all different forms. And it's, it's just the point that people aren't sleeping well. You know, when you're first born and in and, and, and childhood, you have a lot of stage three and four. By the time you get to be, you know, middle-aged adult and certainly aging, you're getting about 10 to 15 percent in stage three and four. 20 to 25 percent is REM, your dream sleep, and that's stable throughout the lifetime. And then the rest is stage one and two. Okay. Well, stage one, even that light sleeping that you talked about that you can easily be woken up from, is that still good sleep? Well, you, you take it back down where you're getting at least 20 to 25 percent of REM, because that's really critical, because REM sleep is restorative for the brain. And then you need that 10 to 15% of stage three and four because that's restorative for the body. So now then you work your way back and you should only get about 10%, maybe 15% of stage one, the rest should be stage two. Mm -hmm. And that's enough that allows us to function as adults uh, you know, through our life. And with the aged population, they need less. They go down to even about 10% of stage three. The REM stays constant, 20 to 25%. Stage two makes up the bulk of it you know, and then stage one. Restless leg syndrome, I've heard people suffer from that. Briefly, what is that and is that something I should go see a doctor for? Well, restless legs is creepy, crawly, tingly sensations. They're worse when you're lying down and they're worse um, in the afternoon and then they're also worse at night. And they can create insomnia because they keep you awake. So the biggest thing about restless legs is that it disturbs sleep and that when you're sitting down, it, it bothers you. Mm -hmm. When there's medication that relieves that, but the problem is the medication, like pain medication, only lasts for so long. So. With, now with a, uh, an onset, say, of dementia conditions or Alzheimer's, that can affect sleep as well. Right. Very much. And, and again, as I said, insomnia, you know, it can uh, uh, impact the sleep of, and, and actually be part of a, looking at causal factors leading to Alzheimer's disease. 
At the same time, when you get Alzheimer's disease, your sleep isn't very good either. So you've got this kind of cycle that's going on between mm -hmm. sleep and the medical disorders. There's so many medical disorders where sleep is attached to that, and the medical disorder makes sleep worse, and sleep makes the medical disorder worse. Traumatic brain injury is another one. Mm -hmm. You know, people who have a traumatic brain, inj brain injury are in pain, and they can't sleep. Seventy percent of them have a sleep problem the first three months of their injury. So with any of those conditions that you identified, probably the first stop for someone is at their primary medical care person. When they have a medical disorder, the question that, that we really urge physicians to ask is if people are snoring or mouth breathing. That's the million dollar question. Because snoring is, can be significant of sleep apnea. In adults it affects attention, concentration, and memory, and also leaves them at risk for uh, increasing, exacerbating heart disease. There's Sleep apnea is a major, major issue and, and a factor in cardiovascular disease, heart disease. What tells my body that it's time to go to sleep? Well, you have two processes that work. One is the circadian rhythm factor, and the other is process S. The circadian is that there's a natural rhythm, okay. and actually we're it gets a little more technical there. These clock genes and clock genes are in all our internal organs. But the point is, is that we're all run by the circadian rhythm, which is light. And so we all wake up at about 8 o'clock in the morning. We all get tired about 11, 12 o'clock at night. Our core body temperature drops, melatonin kicks in, and we're ready for sleep. So let's say you pulled an all-nighter and didn't sleep. Now, 3 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you're like really tired. Of course, that's when all the accidents happen. And then if you, can, if you don't fall asleep, you get better because of the circadian rhythm. So 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock at night, you're fine. Is napping good? Well, the power nap is excellent, but it's 20 minutes. If you get longer than those 20 minutes, then you can create insomnia that night when you try to go to sleep. Okay, so you're not going to take away our naps in order to get good sleep. But I'm going to ask you to limit it to 20 minutes. Okay, that's good.